I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thanks for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we return to our Microsoft Access playlist and we're gonna take a look at DLOOKUP, which is one of the most useful uh, functions that Access has built into the product um, that once you start developing with Access, you're gonna use DLOOK, DLOOKUP like everywhere. And uh, thanks for a viewer request on this one uh, because I think that this is a really great topic. And while DLOOKUP does have a bunch of brothers and sisters, um, other domain functions that maybe I'll cover in another video, uh, DLOOKUP itself is so widely used that it deserves its own video. And so without further ado, let's get to our DLOOKUP in Microsoft Access. Looking for programmers for your project? Make sure to check out the additional links in the description. Okay, so if you're here, you're probably wondering, you know, what is DLOOKUP? And, and you know, what can I do with it? And where can I use it? And, and when should I use it? And when should I not use it? And those are the kinds of things that we're gonna answer today. And DLOOKUP is basically domain lookup, which means that it gives you the ability to look up one value in a table somewhere or a query somewhere uh, based off of um, some criteria that you want just in that moment. And so it's very, very handy. It returns a single value. And so if you know that what you're looking for is a single value somewhere, then this is very, very uh, handy. It's a very, very handy uh, function to use. And it is also, it's an expression, uh, which means that uh, in the Microsoft Access world that you can use a DLOOKUP just about anywhere. So you can use it on a form, you can use it in a query, you can, you can use it in VBA, and you, you use um, almost identical syntax between all of those uh, contexts. And that makes it extremely powerful because you can use it in all of those places. And I'm gonna show you how to use those today. So in its basic form, DLOOKUP is very simple. Basically, you just, you know, you ask for the value by saying DLOOKUP, and then as your arguments, you specify what the field name is that you want, uh, followed by what the table or query name is that where you want to get that field from. And then the third criteria is uh, what is the criteria that you want to use in order to get that value from that table or query. And so it's very, very simple very, very powerful, and we're gonna go take a look at that now. And this is a, a file that we've been using for lots of other uh, examples. And um, I've got some candy tables here, and I'm gonna use this candy table. It has a bunch of different um, you know, candies with prices associated with them. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create just a blank form in form design. Uh, so this is an unbound form and uh, so it's not connected to any tables or anything yet. And I'm just gonna drop, um, I'm gonna drop a, a combo box on there. And I'm gonna use the wizard this time. I'll, I'll, I'll grab the candy table and I'll just select the candy name. And I'm just gonna throw that into the fields there. And you can see that it automatically puts that ID field in the, the uh, primary key field, the ID. So we gotta make sure we pay attention to that. But this is what the list will look like. And when I select this list in my combo, um, I'm gonna use that key and then I'm gonna use a DLOOKUP to go grab the price for that. And cause that's what I wanna show. So I'm gonna say, you know, my, my uh, label is candy name. And then if I click on it here, you can see in the property sheet on the right, um, I'm just gonna add a, a name that makes sense. So I'll call it CBO candy for combo uh, candy. And then you can see that the wizard put in this uh, ID field here, and it's got one bound, or the first column is bound, and it has two columns. So that means that that first column with the ID in it is hidden, um, and so that's a numeric uh, ID as opposed to, you know, the name of the candy. So just be aware of that as we do this uh, little demo here. And so I'm gonna uh, call this uh, candy price lookup form you know, something very simple. And now, uh, you know, if I go and I open this, now I've got a list 
on a form of my different uh, candies. And you can see some of them are, are actually duplicated, duplicated there. Um, but, the, uh, but the main thing is, is that we have our list and the ID field is in the background. So even if the candies have the same name, they have an ID in the background which differentiates them. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a text box here and I'm just going to throw that on the onto the form and uh, we're going to call it candy price and uh, and this is where we're going to use our D lookup. Um, so whenever we choose our candy name in the top there, uh, we're going to grab the price for that in and put it into the uh, text box. So I'm going ahead. I've renamed the text box to txt price so that it actually makes sense and then uh, you can see it has no control source which means that it is unbound and uh, and if I uh, check that ag again now you can see the control source is empty and now we're, we can type into the control source on the right or we can just type directly into the field as I'm doing here and this is where we'll put in uh, dlookup and we'll say uh, you know look up the candy price and that, that's our first argument and then we'll put a comma and we'll put our candy table name as the second uh, argument there and so it's going to get candy price from the candy table and we're going to say where the ID is equal to and then we're going to we're going to do a concatenation here uh, using the ampersand and uh, we're going to put in uh, CBO candy and uh, that will uh, get the value from the the uh, text box, or pardon me, the drop down called CBO candy, in order to evaluate that DLOOKUP expression. So now you can see I, I do have a value here. If I choose a different one, uh, you know, if I choose a different one here, it changes the price each time, and that's what we really want to see. And so that's one way that you can get that value. Um, and, uh, and so, however, if you clear it, you can see, well, uh, that causes an error because the, uh, because there is no, it's looking for a number. Um, so that means that we need to do a little bit of work around, um, you know, if the criteria happens to have a null in there, then we need to throw something in there or we need to do some work around that to make sure that we don't get an error there. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute here. But first, um, you know, you can just hard code a value in too. So if I go into the control source here and I go down to our concatenated expression, I can actually just remove what we put in there that was dynamic and just put in a hard coded number. Like maybe you just want this form to always show the value of a particular thing. So you might just hard code it. And in, in this case, if I change it, it doesn't do anything because um, the, the bound expression there um, is for ID number 14. So it's just going to get that one particular um, uh, price. So you might be asking, well, how can I deal with that situation where, you know, it gives an error? Um, and in this case, there's many ways that you could do this. Um, uh, and this was this is just one way to do it using VBA. But what we'll, what we'll do is we'll we'll remove the expression from the candy price uh, field, and uh, I'm going to leave that empty. But now we're going to look at the candy name, or pardon me, the candy drop down, and we're going to go to the after update event. We're going to click on the ellipsis, uh, and then that's going to give us a VBA procedure uh, where we can. Uh, you know, um, basically just go ahead and do a VBA procedure here. We'll say, you know, we can just say if it is null, the candy drop down, that's, you know, when it's empty, then, uh, you know, me a text price, uh, the text box for price is null, so just set it to empty. And if the uh, otherwise get the value from there and put it into our DLOOKUP, and um, and then that will um, you know allow us to get that value. So we use the same exactly the same uh, syntax in VBA. Uh, we use DLOOKUP, you know, candy price, candy uh, as the table, 
and then ID is equal to, and in this case it's slightly different, you put me, ex exclamation, CBO candy. You can actually just put in CBO candy without the me in there as well. Some people like to do it that way. Um, uh, but uh, now if we open up our form and we change the value, and you can see now it's changing the value for the prices, but if we, you know, uh, if we go ahead and uh, get rid of that value that's in there, um, instead of grabbing a value, um, then uh, it's going to give us an empty, uh, so I'll erase that, and that gives us an empty uh, price down below, and it does not give an error like we saw before. So that covers our forms uh, and reports. Uh, reports are almost identical in the usage, um, so you can, you know, use DLOOKUP in your reports as well. And I'm going to create a query here from the create uh, ribbon there. And, uh, and I'm going to, uh, I'll, first I'll show you this table. This has a list of new prices for particular um, candies. And so this is a list, you know, uh, similar to what we saw before, but this has new prices on it and the, the IDs don't match. So this is, in this case, we're gonna use only the candy name and it's going to show you the candy price. So here's our, our new prices for candy. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the name of the output field for candy price. I'm going to call that the new price. And then I'll, in order to get the old price for candy in my query, I can use a DLOOKUP. And, uh, and I'm going to use that here. So I'm going to say DLOOKUP candy price um, from the candy table and where you know the candy names match basically and now in this case i i need to be aware that um, in the other table if you recall there were multiple candies with the same name even though they had different ids in the background so this is actually going to grab a random uh, a random price uh, from the ones that have duplicates um, it's going to grab one of the prices uh, that were in the other table so Depending on your circumstance, you might need things to match exactly and, and get that. But in this case, maybe we just want to grab one of the old prices of the uh, candies in the other table. And so now if I open the, the query, you can see that here's the old price from the other table. And you'll, you can actually see it's not formatted because it's just grabbing the numeric value. Um, whereas the uh, we can see the formatting in the candy, the new uh, new candy uh, prices, but as you can see, there's the dark toffee 4157 uh, is the old price, and then the new price is $36. And so that's sort of like how you can stick a DLOOKUP into a query, which is really, really handy. But one of the gotchas is that, um, like I said before, you need to make sure that you're calling something by an ID value or something that you know is relatively unique. Otherwise, you are going to get like one, it'll choose one for you basically randomly of the multiple values that could come back. And so the better that you know the values, uh, the better that you know the criteria is going to return that value that you want, it's, it's the better result you're going to have. Okay, so that covers the, you know, the random value return uh, gotcha. Now the second gotcha that you have with uh, DLOOKUPs and actually domain expressions in, in general uh, is that um, they are very slow if you have to do a lot of them. And so uh, much in the same way that uh, subqueries that are used in SQL, uh, if you use them the wrong way, they'll slow down your query. Uh, domain lookups are almost exactly the same. So that means, you know, if you have 100 records or, you know, 50 records and you put a DLOOKUP in there to get something in your query, then that's fine. That's probably going to work great. If you ha have hundreds of thousands of records or more, uh, you really should not use DLOOKUP. And uh, uh, make sure to check out uh, my video on uh, the uh, simulating lag and lead where I show uh, how just how slow domain functions can be uh, inst as opposed to using a proper set operation which we call where you design actually design a query properly so that it will be optimized and return 
uh, the record set in a fraction of the time that you know a query with a ton of dlookups in it will return the same. And so if you're troubleshooting a report or a query that is very, very slow, uh, looking for dlookups is probably one of the first things that you should do uh, because if you find that there are a bunch of dlookups, you can convert those into uh, set operations and it will speed up your report immensely. Need help or coaching on your project? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. Hope you enjoyed today's discussion on DLOOKUP in Microsoft Access. If you like what you saw today, please give the video a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you didn't subscribe yet. Click the bell when you see the bell. And if you have any questions or comments, put those in the comment section below. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.